it becomes more about the wrong type of spirits toward the end than the other. Kind. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. But, um, but you know, it's, but I thought of that, I was like, that's kind of a fun name to call, you know, what we're doing. I mean, we're not crawling through the cemetery, but, um, cause I guess that's kind of the idea of the pub crawl is that, you know, you end up crawling by the end of it. Um, but just the fact that it's kind of has that to me, it's kind of a, you know, family plots. You can see that, you know, and the one just up here that we talk about quite a bit, you know, where, okay, father and father in the middle on one side are the three boys who all, you know, died at really young ages. And then the other side are these, uh, the two girls who actually lived into full adult lives. And so, um, you know, that was one that was really interesting to us. And so we did some research on the family and, and found out a little bit more about what happened to them. Um, so it, it's a way for us to be able to, you know, connect with some of the different communities, maybe find some lost information. Like um, there's one that we went to go check out, St. Omer Cemetery, which is actually just north of, of Ashmore. Everybody's you know, familiar with Ashmore Estates, um, right. but there's a couple of cemeteries in the area, not the actual one that went with Ashmore Estates. That's on private lane. You can't get to it. But um, there's the Ashmore Town Cemetery, which is really interesting, it has what we call the creepy tree portal in it um because there's this <laughs> set of uh, seriously <laughs> there's like this set of trees around these different headstones where you walk into there and you feel like this really crazy energy um but then the saint omer cemetery which is north of the town um belongs to a town that no longer exists and there's this um monument there for um this this one woman uh caroline barnes who there's a lot of urban legends about her about supposedly being a witch because the death date on that monument is February 31st, which, of course, is a date that doesn't exist. Right. And, and uh, so we went out there to, ch to check out this monument and learn more about her. Um, you know, there's we discovered that there was a, a rash of uh, children deaths at, at one point in time because there were all these children that died all around the same point in time, which was really sad. But then we found a an alternate back entrance to the cemetery that is no longer in use. We found this, you know, uh, gate and posts and everything that had, you know, basically fallen and were lost into the woods. It's like, Oh, this is a whole nother entrance back here. So there's like a part of the cemetery that has also been lost. So we we're discovering, uh, other things about the town that have been lost to time. That's really cool. Yeah, right. yeah, it really why, is. <laughs> why don't we take okay? Why don't we take our next commercial break? You're listening to Paraversal Universe. We will be right back with our guest after these commercials for the next segment. You are listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, Birmingham, Alabama.
Thank you for listening to WBHM Digital Broadcasting out of Birmingham, Alabama. The time is 45 minutes after the hour. Welcome back from our second break. This is Paraversal Universe on WBHM Digital Broadcasting, also heard on WCETFM, Amelia and Pisano Productions, and the Rift Radio Network. We're your hosts, Kevin and Jennifer Malik. Before we get back to the show, we want to tell you all that we are on Twitter as the NWPS and MeWe as Paraversal Universe. Our like and group pages on Facebook are under various headings as well. Having said that, check out our Society's Like page on Facebook, the Northern Wisconsin Paranormal Society Limited, as well as Jennifer's Like page, Jennifer Malik, Psychic Demonologist. Leave a like if you like what you see. We always appreciate it. And there are some Facebook group pages on Facebook we want you to check out as well. The Ultimate Conspiracies group page is one. And the Lake Monstrosities group page is another. That's for Aquatic Mysteries and Wonders. Uh, Feel free to join them both. We would love to see you there. Uh, Each network mentioned has a group and like page on Facebook as well. Where you can find out information on upcoming shows. This segment is brought to you by the book Trail of the Sasquatch, A Shaman's Journey, by cryptozoologist and Iroquois shaman Don Young, who is also a member of the NWPS. Check out his Facebook group page, uh, Kindred Forest and Indigenous Americas. Any comments for this week uh, can be addressed in the live chat room. Let's get back to the show. This is Paraversal Universe, and we were talking to paranormal historian from Haunted Road Media, Mike Ricksecker. You still with us, Mike? I'm still here. So before the break, we got another question in from the chat room, and Joni would like to know, do you, in your opinion, do you think pet cemeteries can be haunted? Sure. Um, yeah, I think all cemeteries can be haunted. You know, I don't necessarily uh, believe that they're I guess I needed to find that a little bit I you know I don't think people are you know sitting there at cemeteries hanging out with with their bodies unless they were some you know extreme narcissist <laughs> you know I think there's reasons that they yeah uh, that they come back um, and maybe visit like up here where um, I was just talking about the uh, the family when we observe those uh, different things about those those headstones about that one particular family um also some paranormal activity kicked up but um i've seen things at, at cemeteries um where I, i've seen the small forms you know and you you know that they were living um but kind of scurrying a, a, along the ground you know almost and they look like cats you know so i, I i've seen that uh, so a pet cemetery being haunted i mean i've you know, I, I know that there are definitely animal spirits out there. My good friend Rob Guttrow, who has a, a couple of books out there on pets in the afterlife, uh, talks about this um, much more definitively than I do. Um, yeah, so I, I would say, sure, a, a pet cemetery could possibly be haunted. Yeah, we actually have a unique cemetery up here in um, Price County. It's Fidefield Cemetery, and we were walking around it right before winter because... Um, I'm one of those where we check out cemeteries from time to time, and I like to, I love photographing them. And when we were getting ready to leave, I saw this little back corner, and I walked into it, and it was actually a small pet cemetery. And I thought it was just the neatest thing to find in a human cemetery. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's interesting. You don't usually see that too often. Right. Yeah, and, and that, of course, you know, uh, brings up the big question of do animals have spirit or souls, you know? Um, and, uh, for sure, you know, uh, one of the things, you know, uh, over the years is going to cemeteries, uh, are the, 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 there's symbolism on the tombstones and different symbols can, uh, tell you about the person, like their character, um, maybe, uh, affiliations they had. Uh, things that they have done, those kinds of things. And uh, go ahead. Yeah, it's uh, you're you're right. You know, that's a lot of uh, information that you can actually get off of the headstones. Is you know, if you're out there doing some research or wanting to learn a little bit more about somebody, 
you know, those symbols and affiliations are, are definitely helpful as far as that and tell you a little bit more about the person. You know, these days you look at some of the, the modern tombstones, they have these laser etchings of <laughs> all kinds of different things on there. Right. Um, which, you know, it's, you know, there's, you know, I love the older headstones. I love the historic section of cemeteries. Um, but, you know, I think the modern ones are, are have their own beauty to them as well. I think some of those laser etchings are, are absolutely amazing. They are. And uh, we were just talking at the break about uh, um, tomb, uh, statues and, and tombstones and stuff. I, uh, I, that was one of the things that we considered after my son passed was the, the laser etching because uh, they they can get so precise with this stuff now where it, it, it's, you can, I mean, it's, it's so detailed. You, you totally can tell what you're looking at. And, you know, uh, I'm good. I assume they would, uh, them etchings would last as long as anything else that would last on a tombstone yeah. until it would need to be scrubbed or, or whatever as time goes on. But, uh, that is cool because yeah, you know, either that or a statue or something, just something different, you know, would be really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I love the, uh, the old mausoleums. Um, yeah, there's a, uh, you know, Lakeview cemetery in the Cleveland, Ohio area. I have some ancestors that are, that are buried in there and I went to go visit their site, but, uh, Lakeview is huge. And in that same, it's, it's a really large hill, um, that my family plot is at. Um, but as you go down the side of that hill, there is like, it's almost like a little village of mausoleums. And these are like you know, very gothic looking. They're absolutely beautiful. You know, I can't imagine the money that was put into those, but, <laughs> right. um, you know, they're, they're absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And of course, of course, those, those big, beautiful, elaborate statues that people create for their loved ones. Mm-hmm. I mean, those are amazing too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And that's, and that's another one of the reasons why, you know, we, we visit the cemeteries is to, to observe some of that, you know, it, otherwise, you know, it gets forgotten. And, you know, to, to me, it's sad to think that, okay, you know, here's this person that's, that's put there and a couple of generations go by and the family has essentially forgotten about them. You, you go a couple of generations down the road and people, you know, no longer know who that was. You know, that's that's why some cemeteries get forgotten. You know, the the one lost cemetery that we went and checked out, I think it was a year and a half ago, but over there by Shana's uh, hometown of, of Campsville. You know, she has a couple of family members that are buried up in there, some cousins or whatever. But um, the direct family members, you know, they, they're they not familiar with the people that were buried there because it's been a couple generations down the road. So the people that had been taking care of it are all, all now too old to really hike up there and clean it up and chop things down and all that. And the younger generation just don't have an interest because they didn't actually know the people that are buried there. So um, it, it's kind of sad to think about. And so that's another reason why we go is, you know, to go and observe and try to remember some of the people that had been there and just, you know, even pay homage to some of the beautiful masonry and, artwork and decoration that's there yeah there's definitely